Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mariah and welcome to Yoga with Mariah. So today we're going to have a sequence for our upper back, our shoulders, and our neck. So you will need two blocks, a strap, and a blanket, and we will get our practice started. All right, so we're gonna start in um, like a supported back bend. So you're gonna need two blocks. So your two blocks, you're gonna have one block on the highest setting at the back of your mat for your head, and then one block on the medium setting, long way, um, for your shoulder blades or your thoracic spine. So you're gonna come down, and again, if these blocks are too high for you, you can always lower them. Just make sure that the, uh, the highest block for your head is higher than the other block. All right, so you're gonna come down with your knees bent, feet flat on the mat, come down onto your elbow, and then situate the block so that the block, the lower block, is right at the tip of your shoulder blades. And then situate the other block for your head. And we'll find our way here in a supported Shavasana with our blocks. Palms face up, wiggle your shoulder blades together to lift the chest. You can keep your knees bent or you can extend them out. And we'll just connect with our breath here. And as we connect with our breath, we connect with our bodies, our mind. And we bring ourselves back to the present moment. We become aware of our body. We have long deep inhalations, long deep exhalations. Even out the breath. Become aware of your breath. As you melt your body over the blocks. Deep breaths in through the nose, out through the nose. We lay here. If you'd like to set an intention for your class, you can set that now. And then bend your knees if your knees are not already there. Roll off to the right side. So we're going to set up for Virasana. Now, if Virasana doesn't feel good on your knees, you're more than welcome to go to a cross legged position to sit up on a blanket. So in Virasana, you may need one block or you may need two blocks, depending on how your knees are. So we'll place the one block on the mat in the center, and we'll just place our sit bones onto that block. So it's going to be the long way, and then you're hugging the outer ankles into the block, making sure that all 10 toes are pressing down into the floor. Knees are together. As we sit here, and find that length in our spine, lifting the chest towards the chin, drawing the shoulders down and away from the ears. Now, if you're arching in the lower back, find a neutral pelvis by releasing the top of the buttock down, lifting the frontal hip bones up. Take an inhale here and then exhale out through the mouth. Take your arms forward, palms face each other. We're going into eagle arms, Garudasana. So you're gonna cross the right elbow over the left elbow and then cross at the thumbs. Now, if you can't cross the thumbs, you can always place both back of the hands together or you can always hug yourself. Whatever is in your practice today. And as we're here in eagle arms, you'll press the wrists away from the forehead. Lift the shoulders or lift the elbows, shoulders height. Drawing the shoulders away from the ears. We'll do a few rounds of cat-cow here with eagle arms. So inhale, lift the chest, look up. Elbows reach to the ceiling. Exhale, round your upper back, elbows to navel. 
Inhale, gaze up. Exhale, round your upper back, chin to chest. Inhale, look up. Lift the chest. Exhale, round your upper back, spread your shoulder blades apart. Inhale, gaze back up to the ceiling. Exhale, round your upper back, navel the spine. Inhale, come back to center, release the arms. And we'll do the other side. So take your arms in front of you. Then you'll cross the left elbow over the right elbow. Find your way into eagle arms. Press the wrists away from the forehead. Elbows reach shoulder height. We'll do some cat cows here. So inhale, lift the chest. Look up. Exhale, round your upper back, elbow to navel. Inhale, gaze up, arch your back. Exhale, curl your tailbone, spread your shoulder blades apart. Inhale, gaze back up. Exhale, round your upper back, chin to chest. Inhale, look up. Exhale, round your upper back. Inhale, gaze back to center, uncross the arms. We'll just do a few shoulder rolls here. So bring your shoulders forward, up, and back. Forward, up, and back. Inhale, forward, back, and up. Find that neutral pelvis here. Lift the frontal hip bones up, navel towards the spine. So you're engaging that core here to lift the chest. Take your arms out in front of you. You're going to interlace the, th the fingers. Flip the palm. And then firm the outer arms in. Inhale, lift your arms up to the sky. Reach the palms up to the ceiling as you soften the trapezius down. Keep firming the outer arms in, soften the lower ribs in. Release tailbone down and root through your sit bones. So as you inhale here, gaze and look up towards the ceiling. Exhale, chin to chest. Inhale, gaze back up to the ceiling. Exhale, chin to chest. Inhale, look up. Exhale, chin in the chest. Gaze back to center. Release the hands. And we'll interlace the other index finger uh, on the top. So interlace the other awkward way. Press the palms out. And then inhale, reach the arms up to the sky. And as you inhale, reach the the tailbone down, reach the crown of the head away from the tailbone, and then exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, reach to the crown of the head, find that lift. Exhale, twist a little bit deeper using your external and internal obliques. Inhale here, exhale back to center. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist to the left. Inhale, lengthen, root through both sit bones. Exhale, twist a little deeper to the left. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, come back to center. Release the arms. Do a little wrist circles here. And then we'll come to tabletop position. So remove the blocks and place the blocks to the front of the mat so you have access to them. And then you're going to come to tabletop position with your knees underneath your hips. And we're coming into downward facing dog. So I want you to walk your hands about three inches forward. Make sure that the hands are shoulder distance apart and your index fingers facing the front of the room. Lift the forearms off the mat as you firm the other arms in. Tuck the toes and lift your hips up and back for your first downward facing dog. We'll be here for a few breaths. So if you're rounding your upper back um, in your downward facing dog, 
Then come up on your tiptoes. Bend your knees and send your hips up towards the ceiling. Some of you may work on this. And some of you may press the thigh bones back as you release the heels down towards the mat. Now root down into the circumference of your hand, putting a little bit more weight in the index finger and thumb. Lift the forearms off the mat. As you firm the outer arms in, reach the tailbone away from the crown of the head. And then from here, walk your hands to meet your feet for a forward fold Uttanasana. So have your feet separated, hips distance apart and parallel them. You might have a generous bend in the knees, release the crown of the head. Clasp your elbows, rock side to side. Shake yes and no. And feel the gravity pull your upper back down. Soften the belly. Then switch the elbows, rock side to side, shake yes and no, as you find even weight into the feet, with a slight generous bend in the knees. Then release the hands down, and we're going to roll up vertebrae by vertebrae. So bend your knees, tuck your chin towards your chest. And like a red doll, roll up one vertebrae at a time, one by one. Slowly with control, leaving the head to come up last. Now we'll find our way into the center of our mat. So if you'd like to have your blocks, you can have your blocks behind you or in front, whichever you'd like. Come to the center of your mat. Bring your feet together, arms, shoulder height like so. And you're going to bend your knees. And if you have wonky knees, you're going to step your feet wide apart. If not, step or jump your feet wide apart. So make sure that your ankle is in line with your wrist. And then place your hands behind your back. Draw the shoulders away from the ears. So you're going to pivot in your left foot at an angle, and then from deep within the hip socket, rotate the right thigh out. So we're setting up for warrior two legs. So from here, in your warrior two setup, I want you to root down in the outer edge of that back foot. Keep your legs straight for just a second. And I want you to roll that right rib to the left, left rib back, so you're squaring your torso to the side wall. Then bend in the front knee from Virabhadrasana, two legs. Make sure that the left knee is tracking in line, or the right knee is tracking in line with the right ankle. You wanna protect the knee. And if you find that the right knee is caving into the left, I want you to hop that right hip under as you press that left thigh bone back nice and straight. Lift the frontal hip bones up here. Bend a little bit deeper. And with your hands behind your back, I want you to take the clasped hands to the right hip. And by doing so, you're, this is helping you wrap that left rib back, right rib forward. Squaring your chest, broadening through the collarbones. Breathe here. As you root down in that outer edge of the back foot. Now, from here, if you can, place your left hand on your right thigh. For a bind. Now, if your right, if your left hand cannot bind, you're more than welcome to keep it by your right waist. Now, from here, place the right elbow on the right thigh. We're coming into side angle pose. So you're wrapping the left rib back, right rib forward, gazing up towards the ceiling as you broaden through the collarbones. Find that energy up through the right shoulder. So the right shoulder is drawing away from the right ear. Pressing that left thigh bone back, hugging that right hip in. And then look down at your right big toe mound. We're doing your neck stretch here. So as you look down at the right big toe mound, you're going to tuck your chin towards your right collarbone. We'll be here for a couple breaths. 
So hug that right hip under so it's not jutting out. Chin the chest. You should feel this in your left side of your neck and shoulder. Keep pressing into the front heel. Then release your bind. So release the left hand down towards the mat. And then inhale, rise back up to Virabhadrasana 2. Straighten your front leg. Place your hands on your hips, parallel your feet so that it's facing the side wall. We'll do the other side. So clasp your hands behind your back. Draw the shoulders away from your ears. Elbows point back. Pivot your right foot in at an angle. Then take it from deep within the hip socket, rotate the left thigh out. So you're at front heel with the back arch alignment. Square off your chest to the side of the room. So you're rolling that left rib to the right, right rib back. Then bend in the front knee, Virabhadrasana, two legs. Check to see that the left knee is tracking in line with the left ankle. We want to protect the knee. Now if your left knee is caving into the right, I want you to hug that left hip under as you press the right, right thigh bone back nice and straight. Lift the frontal hip bones up, lengthen through the spine. Now take the clasped hands to the left hip. Point your elbows back so you're hugging that left elbow back. Wrapping that right shoulder back, broaden through the collarbones, bend in the front knee. And then from here, place your right hand in a bind on your left thigh or by your left waist. Take your left elbow on your left thigh. Come into side ankle pose. Gaze up to the ceiling for just a moment. Find that energy and lift the left shoulder away from the left ear. Wrap that right rib back, left rib forward. And find your breath here. Hug that left hip under as you press the right thigh bone back nice and straight. Gaze down at your big toe, your left big toe mound. And then from here, take your chin towards your chest or your left collarbone. You should feel this in your right side of your neck and your right shoulder. Lift the left shoulder away from the left ear as you tuck your chin towards your chest. Keep hugging that left hip in so your, your left hip is not jutting out. Press into the front heel. One more breath. And then release the block bind. Take the right arm down towards the mat. Lift on an inhale. Find your way to be able to draw us in a two. Straighten the front leg. Parallel your feet, hands to hip. From here, lift both kneecaps up. Release the top of the butt up down so you're lifting the frontal hip bones up so you're not arching in the lower back. Hands on your hips, hug the outer ankles in. Roll the shoulders up and away from your ear. Elbows point back as you inhale, look up towards the ceiling. And exhale, forward fold halfway. Hold here to draw the belly in. Reach the crown of the head away from the tailbone and then place your hands on the mat or on your blocks. You can come up on your fingertips or palms down the mat. As you broaden through the collarbones, shift your weight into the balls of the feet so that your sit bones are in line with your heels. Now, some of you may stay here. This might be a lot of work for you. Or some of you may walk your hands to meet your feet so your fingertips are in line with your toes as you drop the crown of the head. Now, if you're in Chaturanga arms, you're going to hug the elbows in and the top of the arms are parallel. Hands are shoulder distance apart and you're lifting the shoulders away from the ears. You're sitting in the knee joint and micro bend your leg your knees. Shake yes and no with your head. Relax the neck. Soften the belly. And breathe. 
Take an inhale here. And exhale out all the air. And inhale, walk your hands back up underneath your shoulders, halfway. Now hug the outer ankles in, lift your inner thighs up as if you had a beach ball in your thighs. Place your hands on your hips, elbows point up towards the ceiling, and then inhale, lift up. Bend one knee, and then the other. And we'll find our way to the top of our mats, so you can also bring your blocks to the top. And we'll find our Tadasana. So bring your big toes together, heels slightly apart if you have lower back problems or tight hamstrings, and then you'll separate your feet hips distance apart. Root down in the four corners of your feet. Lift your kneecaps up. Release the top of the buttock down. Palms face the front of the room. Shoulders draw away from your ears. Inhale, lift your arms up to the sky. Parallel your arms. Reach through the fingertips. And then exhale, hinging from the hips, forward fold for Uttanasana, releasing the crown of the head. Inhale, halfway, R Uttanasana, belly lifts in and up. Exhale, bend your knees and step your right foot back into a high lunge. Check to see that the right knee is tracking in line with the right ankle. You can always use your blocks here. And then place the back knee down on the mat or on a blanket and come up on your front thigh. So place your hands on your front knee. Pull your right hip back, left hip forward. Lift the frontal hip bones up and release the tailbone down. Lift through the back ribs as you soften the lower ribs in. We'll go into Gomukhasana arms. So take your left arm forward, spin the thumb back so you're externally rotating. Bicep reaches up towards the ceiling. Lift it up towards the ceiling, then bend your elbow and walk your hand down your back. Take your right arm out to the side, thumb faces down. Bend your elbow and walk your hands up your back. So you can clasp your hands, use a strap, or you can grab your t-shirt if you're unable to clasp your hands. We'll be here for a few breaths in your Gomukhasana arm. So you're drawing that right shoulder back. Softening the lower ribs in. Gaze forward. And then exhale, chin to chest. Roll your chin towards the left collarbone. And then roll your chin towards the right collarbone and stay here. And you should feel this in the left side of your neck. As you point that left elbow up towards the ceiling. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, release the hands down. Place your hands to heart center. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, twist towards the right. So you're hooking that right elbow or that left elbow on the outside of the right thigh. Press in the hands into the chest to broaden through the collarbone. Spinning the right rib back, left rib forward. And you're lifting the lower ribs and the lower belly off the front thigh. Reaching the crown of the head away from the tailbone. Find that length. And then exhale, release the hands down towards the mat. Come on your fingertips. Tuck the back toes, charge the back leg and come into a high lunge. Bend the back leg, use that as a spring, and step your left foot by your right foot. Inhale, halfway for Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, bend your knees, step your right foot back. High lunge. Check to see that your left knee is tracking in line with the left ankle. Place the back knee down on the mat or on a blanket. Inhale, come back, come up onto your front thigh. Hands on your front knee. Pull that left hip back, right hip rolls forward. Lift the frontal hip bones up as you release the top of the buttock down. 
Lengthen through your spine as you soften the lower ribs in. We'll do the other side. So inhale your right arm up to the sky. Spin the thumb back. Bend the elbow and walk your hands down your back. Take your left hand out to the side, thumb faces down. Bend your elbow and walk your hand up your back. Clasp your hands, use your t-shirt or use a strap. We'll be here for a couple of minutes, a couple of minutes, a couple of breaths. As you reach the right elbow up towards the ceiling, inhale, gaze forward. And then exhale, chin the chest. Then roll your chin towards the right collarbone. Then roll your chin towards the left collarbone and see how that feels. You should feel this in your right neck, side of your neck. As you roll that left shoulder back, One more breath here, then inhale, come back to center. Release the hands, bring your hands to heart center. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, twist towards the left. Right elbow grabs onto the outside of your left thigh. Palms touch, broaden through the collarbones. You're pressing the palms into each other. Rolling that left shoulder back, right rib forward. Crown of the head reaches towards the front of the room. Then inhale, come back to center, release the hands down. Tuck the back toes, lift the back leg. Now this time you're gonna root the palms down into the mat, round your upper back, press your hands down, and step your left foot back into downward facing dog. We'll be here for just a moment. As you find your breath, find your body, long, even inhalations, long, even exhalations. Now shift into plank pose, shoulders in line with your wrists. You can always go down onto your knees for a modified plank. So you're releasing the tailbone down towards the heels, reaching the chest forward and then lifting the thighs up towards the ceiling. Now inhale here, exhale, bend the elbow, shift forward and come down all the way towards your belly, slowly with control. Now we'll come into Sphinx Pose. So place your, your forearms out in front of you, palms face down, parallel. Have your elbows in line with your, your shoulders. Press the tops of the feet down into the mat and lift your kneecaps up. So you're pressing the pelvis down, lifting the chest, broadening through the collarbones. So you're pressing those shoulder blades into the chest, dragging your chest through the arms. Now, as you inhale here, exhale, chin to chest. Now, do a few neck rolls here, side to side, slowly. Rock to one side, and then slowly rock to the other side. And just do this on your own. And if you feel any tension on one side of the neck, then you might want to just stay there for just a second. As you breathe through any tension through the neck, find that energy up through the arms as you Pull the shoulders away, lengthen the back of the neck. And then exhale. You'll come back to center. Now what I want you to do is I want you to take your forehead and press your forehead down into the mat. Take your arms by your hips. Palms face each other like airplane arms. You press the, your pelvis and your hips down into the mat as you release the tailbone down towards the heel. You'll inhale, lift the chest, lift the arms. So you're coiling that upper back off the mat, drawing the shoulders away from the ears. Keep your feet on the mat for just a moment. As you reach the fingertips back, you're lifting the chest a little bit higher. Then incorporate the legs, so lift the legs off the mat. 
balls of the feet reach back, inner thighs roll up towards the ceiling, gaze down to lengthen the back of your neck. Take a couple breaths here, lift a little bit higher. Some of you may stay here, some of you may bring your arms in the cactus, palms face down, or even come into full shalambasana, bringing your arms forward. Wherever you're at in your practice, and then exhale, release down. Place your hands like a pillow. Bend your knees. And then windshield wiper your legs side to side. Just neutralizing the spine after a back bend. Back bends are really good for stimulating the digestive system and giving you a lot more energy throughout the day. Also strengthening your, your spinal muscles, which is amazing. <laughs> All right, find some stillness here. Bring your arms by your lower ribs, tuck the back toes, lift the lower ribs off the mat and come into tabletop position. Bring your big toes together, knees as wide as your torso, send your hips towards your heels for extended child's pose. Stay here for a moment. In child's pose, you're more than welcome to place your head on a block, a blanket, or using your hands or fists. And as you connect with your breath here, feel your lower back release and your spine lengthen forward. Your hips open. Walk your hands by your knees. Come up to a seated position. We'll, we'll swing our legs towards the front of the mat and we're going to place our blocks at our feet. So you're going to bring the blocks um, the long way, a medium setting the, by your feet. So you're going to bring those hips distance apart and then place your feet on those blocks. Scoot your hips towards your heels and then bring your arms by your side, palms face down. And we're coming to a robot arm. So bring your arms in robot arms and then your fingertips facing the ceiling. So roll onto the back of your arm and, and retract your shoulder blades. So you're lifting your chest here. And then exhale, lift in your hips up. So press into your heels and lift your heels up. Lift your hips up. <laughs> and then from here, you can stay here with your robot arms or you can rock back and forth as you roll onto the tops of your shoulders, and then you can clasp your hands behind your back. Lifting the chest towards the chin, gazing up towards the ceiling, lift your hips a little bit higher, pressing your calf muscles in your shin, releasing the tailbone down towards the knees as you lift the frontal hip bones towards your lower ribs. Taking a couple breaths here as you press into the feet. Lifting your hips a little bit higher, lifting your chest. And if your knees are splaying out, roll your inner thighs down. So hug the knees in. One more breath here. And then exhale out all the air. Unclasp the hands. And roll down vertebrae by vertebrae, slowly with control. From here, bring your knees in towards your chest for Apanasana and rock side to side, massaging your lower back. Now, we'll go into a little bit of a twist here for a gentle twist. So take your arms like a T, palms face up. Reach your arms vigorously away from each other. Inhale behind your heart center and exhale, release the knees towards the left elbow. Take your left hands on your knees to encourage both knees to stack. You can look upward, look towards the right, whatever feels good to your neck. As you inhale here, lengthen. Exhale, release the right hip away from the right shoulder. Rolling that right shoulder down towards the mat. One more breath here. Inhale, gaze back to the center. 
Use your core here. Try to keep both the knees together. Inhale, come back to center. And then exhale, release the knees towards the right elbow. Place your right hand on your knees to encourage both knees to stack. Again, you can look up towards the ceiling or if it feels good to your neck, look to the left. Inhale here, lengthen. Exhale, release the left hip away from the left shoulder. Gaze back to center. And then try to keep both knees together. Inhale, come back to center. And use your feet to kick off the blocks off the side. And we'll find our way into our, our, our Shavasana. So bring your feet, hips distance apart or wider, and let your feet flop off to the side. Bring your arms at a 40 degree angle, palms face up, or even wider to receive. Snuggle your shoulder blades down your back to lift the chest. Releasing the tailbone down just a little bit to lengthen the lower back. Coming back to regular breathing with no manipulation of the breath. Relaxing the muscles in between your eyebrows. Relaxing the muscles around your eyelids. Relaxing your lips, your cheeks. Unclenching the teeth. Releasing the tongue away from the palate. Finding a softness in your body. For your Shavasana. We'll be here just for a brief Shavasana. Deep in your breath, wiggle your toes and your fingers. Inhale, lift your arms up overhead for a nice body stretch. Then exhale, bend the knees and roll off to the right side. Stay here for a moment. Then use your left hand and come up to a comfortable seated position. Sit up with a straight spine, lift the chest, bring your hands to heart center. We're going to inhale here together and exhale out all the air. Bring your thumbs to third eye. Namaste. So that was it everyone. That was our small sequence for our upper back, our shoulders, and our neck. So if you like the video, please like below. If you want to subscribe to my channel, please subscribe. And we will see you next week, everyone. Bye.